So we usually like to share with you our boating adventures, uh, both things that happen on the water and things that happen while we're repairing the boat. Um, but today we want to share with you something a little bit different that happened to us that really affected us today and sort of taught us some lessons about being out on the water. Um, around 11 o'clock this morning, we left Annapolis Harbor uh, to head to Baltimore. And it was just a normal morning. Um, there was you know, just a little bit of breeze. We didn't get to put the sails up. Um, as we were heading out, we were in the company of two other boats. Um, and there was Windgeist who passed us uh, on our starboard side, um, you know, just out of the harbor. And there was another uh, Tartan 37 uh, that was also really close to us. Um, and we were all, you know, going roughly the same speed for, you know, quite a while. Um, Windgeist pulled out ahead of us, maybe going, I don't know, a tenth of a knot. It's that, yeah, faster, just slowly getting ahead of us. Just slowly crawling ahead of us, no big deal. Um, and when we were uh, just south of the Bay Bridge, we heard uh, a call. And it was that there were five people in the water. Um, and it wasn't from the Coast Guard, it was from a boat, and it was from Windgeist. And so... Which we didn't realize we that didn't, at the yeah, time. We yeah, didn't, we didn't know uh, what boat it was coming from. Um, but since we were so close to the bridge, we, you know, started looking around and seeing if, you know, it was anywhere near, near us, and if there was, you know, if it was, we were going to go try to help. So, um, I took out the binoculars and was looking around, because the bridge is, you know, really long span and who knows how close we were to it, when I saw these red things floating in the water. And I, you know, I didn't know what they were, and I asked Jeff to you know, take the binoculars and take a closer look, because he could run up on deck, because I was um, at the helm at that point. Um, so I went up there and looked through the binoculars and said, yeah, you know, I mean, it looks like those are some life jackets. And at that point in time, I think you know, right before that, when wind guys again, who we didn't know it was them yet, um, it said that there was people in the water and they were giving them life jackets or something like that. So I said, wow, that's, you know, exactly where it is. You know, I mean, and we were still south of the bridge, but we were almost coming up to the span. Um, and we were going to go through the center, but at that point in time, to get to them, it was, you know, going off, you know, not through the center span. And so I told Margaret, just, you know, head for them. And, um, you know, I went down below and, and uh, pulled out our extra life jackets. Uh, you know, we always have a throwable on deck, but I pulled out our, our other throwable. Um, I took off my life jacket because, you know, I mean, I could see that they were kind of struggling to get these people on board or, or you know, these people were struggling to get on board, um, thinking that maybe I was going to get in the water. Um, and, uh, and then I went and reached into the lazarette and pulled out a, you know, a couple of dock lines, uh, long dock lines that we have, you know, in case we needed to throw them to a, a line. I tied one of the lines, one of those dock lines to one of our throwables, you know, and, um, in order to throw it to somebody and then, you know, be able to bring them in. Um, and as we got closer, as we, we went into the span, um, you know, it was, you know, one guy was there helping them, and um, it appeared to me at that point in time that, uh, and, and based on the radio communication that we'd heard, that he was throwing life jackets to these people. So we could see a couple life jackets floating in the water uh, in the front of the boat, but then we could also see some people getting on uh, up, up, you know, a, a you know, kind of movable ladder onto, onto the sailboat, onto Windgeist. And so, you know, Margaret and I headed for the, the life jackets thinking, you know, we should probably pick these people up because they're obviously, you know, struggling out there and stuff. And, um, you know, right as we kind of came even with, uh, you know, with Windgeist and, um, you know, I remember glancing over at one point in time and seeing somebody uh, climb up, but I was really focused on the life jackets ahead of us. I realized that the life jackets didn't have anybody in them. Um, you know, there was just three life jackets out there. There was also a big water cooler. Um, you know, various other sort of floating junk. Uh, you know, I saw some lunches and stuff like that in like a Ziploc bag. Um, and at that at that moment, two you know big, or I should say big, but you know two kind of Coast Guard uh, patrol boats you know st streamed up, and um, you know and I, it all sort of happens at one point in time. But the uh, you know we're we're all we're all sort of sitting there you know we're wondering what's happening where Margaret and I are, uh, looking over now at uh, Windgeist and. Um, suddenly one of the uh, Coast Guard guys just yells, there's somebody else in the water, there's somebody else in the water, um, you know, somebody else is unaccounted for, they have a red shirt on. And, um, you know, it was, you know, immediately you start moving from thinking that we were picking up these, 
you know, people who already had life jackets on and, you know, sort of thinking that the crisis was over to, you know, really being struck with, you know, what was happening and you, you know, just immediately sweeped the, you know, the area with my eyes and, you know, the first the sinking feeling that there's somebody else in the water and then the sinking feeling as we sweep that they're not above the water at all, um, you know, that there's, there's no one there. And, uh, um, you know, we continued to look, uh, you know, there at that point in time. We could hear some people screaming on, you know, wind guys who were obviously upset. Um, and, uh, you know, they, you know, continued to, to search and we continued to search. That was, so, um, everybody continued to search. This began happening at, at noon or that this began at noon and we continued to search until just before one o'clock. Uh, and, you know, at that point in time decided that um, we should head on uh, to make sure that we get into port and, and uh, you know, also recognizing that it was a definitely a recovery um, you know, effort at that point in time. Uh, the Coast Guard and the other folks continued to stay um, on station and um, are continuing to look now. We heard pom-poms the entire time up to Baltimore. Um, you know, we talked a lot about it, you know, we cried a little bit about it too. Um, you know, I, I think that there's... There's not too many lessons, you know. I mean, for us, I, I feel like we did everything we could. Um, you know, we as soon as we heard that, we started looking around, trying to figure out where this was happening. Uh, as soon as we saw where it was, we headed to it. You know, there was really no way for us to get there any faster. Um, and you know, I, I think that you know everything was already sort of done by the time we got there, one way or the other, too. Um, but I think the one thing that you know maybe could have been useful, or, or at least I, I think a lesson to, to take forward, you know, I mean, if, if we ever find ourselves in that situation where we're the first people responding uh, to something, it's just um, to provide as much information as possible over, over the radio. I think Wind Guys did a tremendous job. He was by himself on the boat, um, and, you know, between, you know, getting these people over there, getting some flotation devices in the water, bringing them aboard, I'm sure he had to dig out his, uh, you know, his ladder at that point in time. Um, and also getting on the radio to call for help, which, you know, of course, is, is incredibly important. Um, but, you know, it, so it's hard to fault him, you know, but being on, on the boat himself. But certainly if the two of us were on there, we could have, you know, given a clearer description of exactly where we were so that other boats in the area could have responded quicker. You know, I mean, we, you know, we were a little frustrated that there all these power boats are going by there. It's a Sunday afternoon right on the Bay Bridge, and none of them, you know, decided to pause and figure out what was going on and where it was going on until until there was, you know, 10 different Coast Guard boats with their, you know, their lights on and, and Marine Police light, um, boats with their lights on. Um, but, but giving a clearer location uh, would, would have been helpful, um, or, you know, I think going forward we could think about giving a clearer location. The other thing is giving a, a very clear description of, of the nature of, of the problem. Um, you know, when we first heard, you know, swimmers in the water, you know, swimmers in the water. I'm thinking that they're doing a long-range swim, and that we're pretty good, quickly going to hear that the you know the the uh, kind of you know, boat that was going along with them came up and cleared everything up. So you know, initially my thought was, oh, you know, this is going to sort of take care of itself. It's not even an issue. But um, you know, if we had heard that there was people struggling in the water uh, uh, immediately, you know, I mean, I, we couldn't have got there any faster. But maybe other people would have responded in different ways uh, than than they did. Um, but, you know, there's not too many lessons for this. It, I guess it's just, you know, make sure you wear your life jacket. Because we come to find out when we looked up on the, uh, on the um, news that uh, there were six people in a 18-foot or 17-foot sailboat. And the sailboat took water over the stern and went down really quickly uh, to the point where they weren't able to get life jackets on. Um, and, you know, that's terribly unfortunate. Uh, and it's even more terribly unfortunate that they didn't have, they didn't all weren't wearing flotation devices. Cause, this certainly you know, would have turned out differently if that was the case. Um, I, you know, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, I mean, we're just upset about it, and um, I wanted to share that with you, and you know, share our thoughts about you know, what could have been done you know, differently, or, or how we would have uh, approached the situation, or how we will approach the situation now. I think, um, you know, having gone through this. Yeah, it was really eye-opening to experience the sort of chaos and panic of people in the water off your boat and just how you react to it and what you are capable of doing in the situation and uh, yeah again Windgeist just did a tremendous job yeah and, by himself yep and uh, 
you know, I just wish we could have got there sooner. Yeah, I wish I was in an outboard. You know what I mean? Because it would have been there faster and, you know, would have been had an ability to move around more, but we weren't. You know.